Hi there, I'm Dr. Grant Stevens, and I'm here in beautiful Park City, home of the American Brazilian Aesthetic Medicine Meeting, the annual meeting, also known as ABAM. We're here at the Sheridan Hotel here in Park City. Right behind me is Deer Valley, and the Park City Ski Resort. Every other year we come here, the other years we're in Brazil. Special shout out to Renato Saltz, Dr. Saltz is the chairman and the founder of this meeting. And uh, we'd like to thank him for allowing us to be here. And if you follow me here, I'm gonna be interviewing a number of the doctors and a lot of industry, people that have been on the technology of beauty and other people that are going to be on it. And you'll get to know the movers and shakers of the beauty business as you do every Tuesday on the Technology of Beauty. So come follow me, here we go. Any statements or views expressed on this podcast are the opinion of the host and guests respectively. The technologies and commercial products discussed herein and any claims made in relation to these have not been evaluated by the Technology of Beauty, its host or producers. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Technology of Beauty, where I have the opportunity to interview the movers and shakers of the beauty business. And today is no exception, except that we're in Park City, Utah. We're not in our home office at our home studio in Manhattan Beach, California, but rather we're here at the American Brazilian Aesthetic Medicine Meeting, or ABAM for short. And we're here because Dr. Renato Salsa has allowed us to come here and set up the studio. And guess who I get to interview? Dr. Renato Salz. There you go. How thank you, you for mate? allowing us and thank you for gracing us here at this interview. So how's the meeting going? Meeting is going well. I actually am a veteran of your show. You this are. is my second interview. You're right. That's correct. You thank are. you. Thank you for bringing me back. And thank you for being here. And uh, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Technology of Beauty is such an amazing project. And you keep telling me, oh, you're just saying that. No, I mean it. I mean it. Uh, what, what Grant has done for our specialty it has connected it in such a way with industry that uh, I never seen before. So I, I really appreciate that. And I, and, and I keep telling that. You're very kind. Now tell us about your show, ABAM. First of all, where do the profits go? Where, where does the, all the money you make? Oh, the story. money we make. <laughs> it doesn't go tell to... Tell everybody. It doesn't, well, you know, you've been but with us. But they don't know. Been with us from the very beginning. Uh, so ABAM is a nonprofit organization. is a 501c3. And all the profits, 100, uh, after we paid expenses, uh, 100% goes to Image Reborn Foundation, which is also a nonprofit uh, dedicated to help uh, breast cancer survivors. It's a 24-year-old nonprofit uh, we established here in Utah in 1998, and that offer three-day no-cost retreats to breast cancer uh, survivors. Uh, you've been to the fundraise. You have been a supporter for so many years. And uh, it's really something very close to my heart. And, uh, and so the American Brazilian Aesthetic Meeting uh, supports a uh, Image Reborn in a way of almost half a million dollars now. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's a good So that's thing. Image Reborn. And Dr. Salz actually formed and founded Image Reborn. You said 23 years ago now? Uh, 1998. Yeah, Amazing. 24 years. Yeah. It's a wonderful, yeah. wonderful yeah. charity. And you yeah. did a great job. And then having ABAM support it, it's unbelievable. Now, this meeting is considered a smaller meeting, except it has such an international feel. There are people from so many countries. Why don't you share with us the countries that are represented here? Uh, this year we had 16 countries, uh, you know, pandemic affected a lot of the participants. Uh, some got COVID, they couldn't get a, a negative PCR. And I kept telling, check yourself again and again, and they couldn't come. Some countries uh, are backed up in visas, mm -hmm. U.S. visas, so they couldn't come. They are presenting virtually. Um, but it, it, it's a good, it's a good thing. It, oh, it's it, it sort of it's has fantastic. opened the doors. Uh, for presentations in the United States, and you know it's so hard to get in, in our society meetings. Uh, young people have an opportunity to be at the podium, maybe for the first time. Mm -hmm. Many have taken English classes to learn how to present. Many uh, have taken uh, lectures how to put a PowerPoint together. So, in some are now world celebrities. You know, you look at Nazim Cherkis, Lina Triana, you know, so many of our friends that, that this was... Uh, the door uh, to uh, 
you know, be recognized. Uh, no question about it. And you have other specialties, uh, derm and facial plastics. You and, so and I have always been very passionate about multidisciplinary yes. meetings. We understand, we appreciate the value of that. We learn from our colleagues. And I thought, you know, I'm not connected to a society. I can do it. This is Park City. I can do what I want. And, and it's been wonderful. We have a Absolutely. great education from facial plastic surgeons, from uh, dermatologists, oculoplastic surgeons. They're all here teaching us. Yeah, it's a wonderful meeting. And it's great that you're so inclusive. And uh, we all can learn from one another, right? A hundred percent. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We need to get you back on the slopes, then back for the second half of the show. Thank you so bad. Thank yeah. you so much, Cowboy. You're boy. welcome. Appreciate it. <laughs> you're welcome. All no, right. you're the sheriff. I am the sheriff. <laughs> Bye-bye. You take care. I was able to get a special guest, and her name is Carol Van Hove, and she is both the CEO of a new company called Ravel, as well as the chairman of the board, chairperson of the board of Sientra. Welcome, Carol. Good Thanks. to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. I understand you're uh, releasing a new product uh, at this meeting. What's the name of it? <coughs> we, what does it do? We are. We are launching a new technology called Avali, and it's a new approach to cellulite. So we've been a small little company that's been in stealth mode for quite some years. Um, we've been studying the underlying anatomy of cellulite, and we've come up with a really cool new approach that I think might, for the first time, be a trusted and a very reliable approach to cellulite. That's fantastic. Yeah. And yesterday you were presenting it and educating a number of physicians. I was yes. fortunate enough to yeah. be there. Yeah. And uh, about 40 docs, yes. germs and plastics. Germs and plastics, yeah. 40 physicians that are really intrigued in treating cellulite, that have studied the area for quite some time, and that um, really understand that there's a need for a different solution. And so we've brought those 40 together, a really excellent mix of of plastic surgeons, dermatologists, so it's been a, a, a great meeting of great minds. Great. Now, is this a device or is it a box? Is yep. it energy? Is it lasers? Yep. What is it? Yeah, it is um, a single disposable, so no capital equipment, no repeat sessions. Um, it truly is a manual instrument um, that doesn't require a plug-in, no exchangeable parts, um, that is uniquely engineered to treat the underlying culprit cause of cellulite, which is a septa, the fibrous bands. So um, again, this is a technology that will be a one-time treatment for the patient um, and a disposable for physicians. Okay. So since the physicians aren't buying a, a large capital item, right. I would imagine this is more economical than the, those if they had to do that. Correct. And also it is a very versatile instrument in a sense that we can treat cellulite for the buttocks as well as the thigh, lateral, posterior thigh through two small entry points that just need a steri strip upon closure and local anesthesia. So it truly is an in-office procedure um, with a single disposable and a single treatment session for patients. So economically highly advantageous. So the patient doesn't have to go to sleep. Correct. And there's no downtime? Can they get off the table and dry themselves Downtime home? will be swelling, bruising, um, some soreness uh -huh. um, with very um, nice resolution of the bruising. Um, uh, and again, all the adverse events are, are very mild and transient. Excellent. How can a patient find a doctor uh, who does this? I mean, does yeah. every doctor in the U.S. have it now? Or? No, we are just uh, introducing the device to this group of 40. Um, and our approach to launch is that we are going to proctor cases with those 40 physicians to really kind of um, replicate the success that we had in the clinical study, which thank you very much, Dr. Stevens. You were our primary investigator. Um, so we're going to replicate the success we had in the study into the real world. We're starting with this group of 40, um, and then we'll sort of expand upon that. So it's going to be a steady uh, approach to commercialization. I think that's fantastic because yeah. technique does matter. Yeah, and technique we've matters. And we sold a bill of goods over yeah. the years with cellulite. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, well, we know the mechanism works, right? So it's a, a real mechanical solution for a, the very specific issue of cellulite. So we've studied um, what cellulite is caused by. And so, you know, you have the thinning of the dermis, you've got the enlarging fat cells, and then you've got these fibrous bands, right? But um, in all the studies we've done, which again, you were a part of, right? No less than 12 cadaver labs we realized that these fiber septa are much more complicated. And so we have engineered a tool that can 
target those fibrous septa, that complex structure of fibrous septa in a very precise manner and allows you to verify the job. So um, with that in mind, it's technique oriented, right? Which is um, we really want to help and support all of these cases and uh, support physicians on, on doing these, uh, the procedure really well um, and then go from there. Excellent. I agree. So how are you liking the American Brazilian Aesthetic Medicine I love meeting, it. ABAN? I love it. To, to be amongst a group of such esteemed plastic surgeons, and then obviously we brought in a great group of dermatologists too, but it's an intimate meeting. The scientific content is high quality. The interactions, I think, are extremely productive and rich. Um, and it's just great to be amongst a, a, a fantastic group of friends. So. Yeah. Feel very and a privileged. Little international flair. And international flair, Europeans, which as you know, South I'm Americans, Belgian, and so Belgian. I feel right at home. <laughs> and Dr. Saltz is just a gem of a person and uh, has opened up the conference for us. Um, so very grateful to be here. Yeah, so am I. Yeah. It's a yearly conference. Yeah. And we go between here and Brazil, yeah. alternating years. Yeah. And I hope you come back next year also. We sure will. We excellent, sure will. Excellent. Okay, well, thank you very much thank for, you for having uh, me. being on the show. Thank you for having me. And I love the technology of beauty. Avalay. And I can't wait to talk more about Avali on the Avalay technology of beauty. Avalay. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> Welcome back to the technology of beauty, where I have the opportunity to interview the movers and shakers of the beauty business. And today is no exception, except that we're in Park City, Utah, at the American Brazilian Aesthetic Medicine Meeting, or ABAM. And I was able to get a big mover and shaker to come and share his time with me, Philippe Chazan. He's been on the show before. Philippe, so great to have you. And welcome you, to the Grant. meeting. And I understand you're on the board of directors for a, a company that's exhibiting here. We're going to get to that. Okay. But first of all, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. I saw your beautiful wife the other night. Yeah, she's here. Yeah. But she's hiding. She is? <laughs> well, I, I had a wonderful time with her the other night. I so know. Just saying, she's beautiful, and what a wonderful lady. Thank Boy, you. are you lucky. <laughs> yeah, I marry up, as we say, uh -huh. right? So how are you liking the meeting? The meeting is uh, extremely interesting, and uh, like what you're doing, this meeting is all about innovation, disruptive uh -huh. innovation. And that's what I like about it. You know, a meeting is successful if they can share disruptive technique, disruptive products, disruptive technologies. And that's all about ABAM. And yes. it's about your show, about the people that you interview. It's also about Revel that just unleash, you know, disruptive technology. Can you read that word over there? Aveli. No, 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 no. Aveli. Aveli. Yeah. Aveli. Aveli. Okay, thank you. I, you need the French accent and the French Aveli. touch to pronounce Aveli. the word, but it's Aveli. Aveli. Okay. Good Tell job. us, what is Aveli? So Aveli is a new um, product. It's a medical device for the treatment of cellulite. Uh -huh. And as you know, cellulite is a, is a huge unmet need. There is yes. no product to th today or no technology today to really tackle that unmet need. Uh -huh. There are a lot of women, you know, le looking and seeking solutions. And Aveli, for the first time, is going to be the answer to their uh, desire and their heart may need. And this is FDA uh, cleared, right? That is correct. Okay. And is it available? It is available. And actually, yesterday, we had our first meeting with 40 KOLs, half dermatologists and half plastic surgeons. And for the first time, this group of physicians, both derms and plastic, are, are going to be working together. Yes. It's the f almost the first technology that allow, you know, both um, specialties, specialties yeah. to work together. Yes. Um, and as you know, when you have a disruptive technology, it's always an opportunity to upsell the consumer or the patients to other treatment. Uh -huh. So you can see referrals from one segment to the other, derm referring to the plastic and plastic referring to the dermatologist. Uh -huh. So it's, it's really a disruptive technology. It's, it's very extremely exciting. exciting. Extremely, extremely exciting. Extremely exciting. Extremely exciting. Yeah. We had the opportunity to interview the CEO, Carol Van Carol. Hove, yeah. uh, of the company, Revel. Am I saying Revel right or is it Revelé? No. <laughs> Revel. Revel. Okay. Aveli and Revel. Aveli and Revel. Well, great. Any other things you'd like to share with us about the meeting? Uh, you know, I'm always impressed by the quality of the speakers, both at the Revel show and at the Abam show, um, and sharing their experience and their expertise in the field of aesthetics. Aesthetics, as you know, this year has seen a lot of consolidations and, and some acquisition or M&A, as we say. Mm -hmm. 
Aragon bought uh, Soliton, Galderma bought Elastin. It's just the beginning. All those giant aesthetic companies are going to continue to acquire technologies. And what's interesting is you have a lot of startups with disruptive technology that are waiting to be acquired by those big guys. Uh -huh. So their technology is being used by a broader range of uh, physicians. During the last show, when you interview me, we talk about the fat melting injectable from Israel called Raziel. They cool. just finished their phase 2B for cemental, okay. and they're going to start now for flanks and abdomen. Okay. Imagine having a six pack by just sculpting your abdomen with a fat melting injectable. Unbelievable. That would be very disruptive, right? 100%. That's going to so be fabulous. What's interesting is to see all those technologies being developed by those little startups and potentially acquired by the big guy to make a big splash and a big event out of those uh, yes. new, uh, new products. So that's a look into the future. As you, when I asked you about your crystal ball when you were on my program <laughs> and you predicted that and it's happening. So he really does have a crystal ball. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, listen, thank you very much. My pleasure. Uh, are you and your wife going to go skiing this afternoon, or what's on the Not agenda? Not really. We're going to look at Park City and, and discover the town. So, well, Main uh, Street is really a ton of fun. So Yeah, we do that. Yeah, walking Main Street. There's so many fun stores there. And get yourself a glass of wine. <laughs> Wait, Jim. You take care. Thank you, Grant. With us today is a legend, Dr. Paul Nassif. <laughs> Welcome, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, Good a legend. You, I like that. Wow, a legend. I don't know if I've been at least in that. his own mind. If exactly. Uh, he needs no introduction, but I would like to tell you, he used to be my neighbor, and we've been friends for many years, and we're colleagues, yes. and we're here in Park City at the American Brazilian Aesthetic Medicine Meeting. Thanks to Dr. Renato Salz. And you're going to be sharing a lot of information with us about rhinoplasties and surgery and so forth. Um, thank you for taking time out to join us here. Yeah. So uh, tell me, what's your impression so far of the meeting? Well, I think this is probably my eighth or ninth meeting uh -huh. um, of with ABAM. Renato, of, of ABAM. ABAM. Yeah. And I got to tell you, I mean, this is probably one of the most exciting meetings because, one, you get to see all the colleagues, especially from Brazil and Europe, and especially you and I get to hang out, yeah. and, and uh, especially since we all get back in life and, and things get so hectic. Two, you always come out of here learning a number of pearls, no matter how experienced you are as a surgeon. And, uh, I mean, and this is such a beautiful place to go. A little bit of skiing, a little bit of fun, some great restaurants, but more importantly, really hanging out with my colleagues, yeah. good friends. Yeah, it's a great meeting, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And it's a great cause. It's a nonprofit. That's and right. Renato's charity, and, and so it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful cause that Renato is supporting. He's and wondering. we're supporting by coming to it. Exactly. Yeah. So how's life uh, with the new baby? 16-month-old <sighs> Paulina, um, and my beautiful wife, Brittany, and then, of course, I have three boys. Christian, Colin, and Gavin. You know, life is fantastic. But being a dad again, a little bit older, uh -huh. uh, to a baby, especially after working all day, come home, and then you see the smile, and you see, you know, the giggling, and, uh, you know, and hold her in my arms and play with her. It's the most incredible thing, being a dad again. I think I appreciate it more since I'm older, more mature. Uh-huh. You know, I hear fantastic. that all the time. Guys it really is. Having a family a little bit later in life, and they've had one, they have a second one. That's great. Well, she sure is cute. I, we all follow you on Instagram oh. and Facebook and all, all the others, and she's just a, such a cutie pie, oh, yeah. as is your wife, your well, beautiful wife. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, brother. So, you know, you've been in this for a number of years, and you, you have a lot of experience. And uh, I, I heard you have a crystal ball, actually. Everyone yeah, talks about exactly. Dr. Nassif's crystal ball. And I was wondering, did you bring it today? And if so, what do you see in the future? I mean, what I think is going to continue to happen is, you know, the pr progression of these minimally to non-invasive therapies. Uh -huh. I mean, even at this meeting. I saw an incredible device, uh, especially when it comes to body contouring, fat, mm -hmm. all these other devices and technology. I feel that it's getting better and better. I feel that as in the next five years, we might be cutting a little less. Uh huh. And, um, and we having have more technology. And we already have. I mean, yeah, in other words, that's I got trend, asked this right? question five years ago. Uh huh. And um, I've already seen now the progression from last five years to now, how there's already been some incredible technology. And then now to the next five years, I just say getting better and better. Now, I mean, some of the stuff that, you know, you and I do when it comes to the nose, that's going to always be there for nasal surgery. 
and some of the, you know, the facelifts and some of the things that really need surgery, that's never going to go away. But I think starting earlier, I think I'm starting to see a few things happen. I'm starting to see patients coming a little bit earlier, yep. especially after being at home, uh, whether it's technic uh, from, you know, being on your, uh, you know, your iPhone or your iPad and looking down versus, I, I, there's something I call is um, selfie dysmorphia. And then again, what's happening is these young patients are coming in, they're filtering the, so much of their looks. So they're coming into the office thinking, okay, this is what I want to look like. Sometimes a little bit real, unrealistic. But I see that these treatments are becoming more and more, even at an earlier age, minimally invasive treatments. Right. Whether Fillers it's a simple hydrofacial, mm -hmm. Botox, filler, you know, some type of laser treatment. So I think that as the folks are becoming younger and younger, taking care of their skin more, I think as the technology is going to continue to evolve, so better technology, better treatments, and the population is getting younger that's coming into our office for minimally invasive treatment, even skin care. That's what I see. And I think COVID, I think being home on social media, I think doing Zooms, all that, I think is actually increasing that. Yep, I agree entirely. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. And I look forward to your lecture later on uh, tomorrow morning. And I'll see you at the faculty dinner tonight. All right, brother. Take thank care, you. Bro. Thank you. You take care. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Technology of Beauty, where I have the opportunity to interview the movers and the shakers of the beauty business. And today is no exception. However, today we're in Park City, Utah home of the American Brazilian Aesthetic Medicine Conference that we're at right now. We're sitting at the conference, and I have the opportunity to interview Adam Daniels, the CEO of Influx Marketing. Welcome. How are you doing, Adam? I'm doing great. Good great to, to see, see you, you, Grant. Yeah. How are you liking the meeting? It's great. Uh, you know, we, uh, we love coming to ABAM. We've come every year for the last several years, and it gives us an opportunity to really see... Uh, our clients and new new surgeons in the space, but also more importantly to see innovation that's happening in the space uh -huh. and to kind of stay dialed into the industry. And we like that to give us, uh, to make sure we're ahead of the curve on what's happening and that our team can be ahead of the curve specifically in servicing our clients so we can give them kind of first mover opportunities. Why don't you tell us what you do? You said your clients are going to take it. Those are doctors. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so what does Influx Marketing do? So in, we, we focus uh, on the aesthetic space. So we're, we're a digital marketing company and our entire focus is on aesthetic medicine. Okay. So we provide digital services to aesthetic medical practices and uh, it, particularly for doctors who are interested in increasing the, the value of the clients that they're able to procure through elevating their brand and elevating their ability to attract um, higher value clients. Great. Yeah. You've probably seen a lot of other technologies here on the floor here at the show. Anything ca uh, capture your interest or For, there any technology? Yeah, or? there's a few particular at the show that have been really interesting. Um, uh, I'm really interested in Ravel Aesthetics and, and their new product that they're rolling out, which really started rolling here at mm -hmm. this particular That's show. Right. Uh, and, and there's a few others. Apex is interesting. I think that their platform continues to evolve and, and I think it's going to be a real value to practices in order to further train and advance what they're doing. And then there's a few others, uh, Ultimate Contour and a few other products that I think are potentially promising. So, yeah. Did you uh, hear about that company? Uh, uh, let's see, was it the company out of Boise, that technology? Engage. Company? Yeah, yes. that's it. Did you hear about Engage? I have. Engage, I think, is fascinating as well. And I know you spoke about them this morning. I, I, think, that, um, I think that they're an incredible company and, and that their ability to deliver video and communications in the way that they do is going to really change the game. I do too. Yeah. Full disclosure, I'm on the board and I'm the chief medical information <laughs> officer of Engage, full disclosure. <laughs> so anything else you want to share with us? Uh, yeah, I guess I would just say, you know, uh, we, we love coming and supporting Dr. Renata Saltz and ABAM. I think that the, the purpose of this meeting and the fact that it goes to support a nonprofit is something that's unique sort of mm -hmm. in this space. And uh, that's why we've been supporting it for the last several years and why we're going to continue to do so in future years. I think it's... It's something that anyone can get behind, and us at Influx and our with our drive specifically in aesthetics, we're we're very much behind his mission there. Yes, as am I, and as are we here at the Technology of Beauty. And a big shout out to Renato Saltz. Dr. Saltz has graciously allowed us to be here and to film and to interview and so forth. And what a great cause! And Absolutely, ABAM is a yearly event. 
It happens here in Park City and then goes down to Brazil, alternating years. It's a ton of fun. Uh, I've been to all of them. And I must say, I've learned a lot and made a lot of friends. And what a worthy cause. Absolutely. Okay. Well, great. Yeah. Thank you for joining me. Yeah. Now, we're going to be interviewing now Terry Ross from hey, Apex. And Terry was on the program <clears throat> before. And I want an update from you, if possible. Everyone wants an update. What's mm-hmm. been going on with Apex? It's one of the most exciting new uh, companies in the aesthetic field. Well, first of all, welcome, Terry. Thank you, Grant. Thank you so much for having me. I always love to be here with you. It's always a good time. It's great to have you. And I'm dying to hear the latest and greatest on Apex. Oh, my God. I don't even know where to start. Well, obviously, you're so instrumental in the company, as, as many are here today. But we are just growing at leaps and bounds. We were recently at the Octane Conference last month, and you were there. We were able to pitch to industry investors and private equity. Um, we recently just came off the medical spa show at the end of January. Literally 350 people in my talk, standing room only. Biggest sales month ever. Yeah. Well, congratulations. (laughs) Thank you. And you have a number of physicians working with you already. I know I've seen Paco and Barry and Renato. And this is Renato's meeting, everybody. I know. I'm so honored. And you're working with industry and you're talking to a number of of companies. And I heard you were at the Amspawn show. That's the show you're talking about, right? Yes. That was in Chicago, wasn't it? No, it was uh, in Las Vegas. Vegas. Las Vegas. That's right. End of January in Las Vegas. They had 1,600 attendees. I think everybody's really excited. Again, so excited to be here today, to be back in action you know, interacting good, with that. Doesn't it? it feels so good, right? Are you going to get yeah. a, any skiing in on this trip? You know, I blew out my knee, so maybe a little toboggining, maybe a okay. little. Did <laughs> you bring your daughter, your beautiful I, daughter? I did. I did. She's here. She just got here. So I'm excited to have her here. She's our little ma- mascot. She did a great video, right? I saw it. Telling everybody what Apex is going to make people a lot of money. It was no? on Instagram, right? <laughs> it's on YouTube as well. YouTube. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. great. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank and you. And you're going to be here through Sunday. I'll be here through actually Monday. Monday. I'm giving four or five talks on Sunday. Four or five? Yes. Whoa. Yes. That's yeah. a record. It's a record. Yeah. And you have a booth right here. We have a booth. We're really excited to kind of just expose everybody on an international level. Apex is ready to go international. All of our courses, all of our training has been like converted internationally. So we're really excited about that. We have all of our new dashboards launching, our QuickBooks integrate, like some really great development stuff. So, so Terry is the co-founder along with Isaac. And hopefully we'll get Isaac back up here. He's probably setting something up. Mm -hmm. And as you probably know, Isaac is Renato's (laughs) son-in-law. And uh, together you guys have formed APX or Apex. Yeah. And uh, congratulations on all of your successes. I look forward to hearing more. Uh, in the coming weeks of all the companies you're going to be working with. Well, again, thank you to you and our board. And, you know, our, I'm so grateful to have you guys super well, instrumental for our growth. And I think that was one of the big key takeaways that I heard even Carrie Strom say is that industry is looking for education and culture. And I think that's what we're able to provide and close that gap. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank have you, Grant. a great time. I'll be seeing you at the show. And hee haw. Yeah. <laughs> Giddy up, Thanks, girl. guys. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Welcome back to the Technology of Beauty, where I have the opportunity to interview the movers and shakers of the beauty business, and today is no exception, except for the fact that we're filming today in Park City, Utah, where we're attending the American Brazilian Aesthetic Medicine Meeting, or ABAM. Thanks to Dr. Renato Salch for allowing us to film here some episodes of the Technology of Beauty, and I was just able to get our special guest, Dr. Kia Mozavagi. Nope. Molasagi. Molasagi, excuse me. <laughs> not, not a problem. Welcome, Kia. Thank you. And thanks so much. He just came back. He's training for an Ironman. He, he's been doing everything. I just got him. He just uh, ran four and a half miles. He's the future president of the Aesthetic Society. Yes. He's our dear friend. He's a loyal duck fan. He lives in Eugene, Oregon. And we're dear friends. Go Ducks. <laughs> so thank, I'm so thankful you're here. I'm so thankful to be here, be invited here, and... Glad that you had asked me to join Absolutely. you. You've been to a number of ABAMs, right? This is my second uh, <clears throat> meeting what last do you think? year and this year. Okay. How's it going for you? How's the meeting? I think the meeting is a role model meeting for the rest of the society. This is the kind of meetings that we need to think about for the future. Okay. Where family and science can come together. That's what sort of I feel like is missing a lot of the meetings. A lot of meetings have become more business oriented go for a couple of days to a meeting of a trip and you separate the doctor from the family and you already have already busy lifestyles. I think into the future we should be having more of these type of meetings where we can 
bring the family and join us and have the scientific as well as the fun part all together. I couldn't agree with you more. And uh, for those of you who don't know, we have the meeting. It starts early in the morning, and then we break at about 11, and we get to go skiing. And then we come back together again around 5-ish, and we go till 7. And so we can hang with our families in the middle of the day, and then the evenings we get together for dinner again. Exactly. The other nice thing, as you know, is the international feel, since it is the American Brazilian. But we have guests from Europe. We just interviewed uh, Nazem from Istanbul, and we have a lot of South Americans, of course. So it has an international feel, right? Absolutely. It brings that beautiful flavor. Yeah. I mean, the world is flat. You know? <laughs> <laughs> We're all connected, and we... You know, the more we can collaborate and bring us all of our the beautiful minds together, the more we can learn and advance the cause, which is aesthetic medicine. Absolutely. So, what's the next meeting for you? Would it be the Aesthetic Society meeting? So, actually, no, the next meeting for me is to catch a flight in a couple of hours, and I'm going to the Northwest Society Plastic Surgery meeting That's right. in Maui. That's right. So you used to be the president of the Northwest I was the, Society. I was the president of the Northwest Society five years ago, and you I were my, remember. You were I my came guest spoke speaker. For you. Yes. That's right. So, I'm going to Maui in a couple of hours, and I'll be giving a couple of talks there, and... And then from there, I, uh, my next meeting would be the Aesthetic Society meeting in San Diego. But on April 20th, on Wednesday, April 20th, right before the Aesthetic Society starts, I'm pretty sure you're speaking at another meeting. It's called the Aesthetic Summit. Yes. The Innovation Summit, which is, I guess... The Aesthetic like, Innovation Summit on April 20th. And you've invited me to participate on the panel on skincare. So That's right. So looking forward to that. That's actually a great meeting because I went to it a couple of times in the past. And that's where actually the innovations, where you see the, uh, the kind of the uh, front of the wave is mm -hmm. and where uh, the future of the plastic surgery and the new technologies coming about. That's the beauty of that uh, uh, so meeting. One, one so day one day meeting, day meeting. We're trying to bring in the new stuff, right? The new stuff. The new technologies of beauty. Yes. And we're looking forward to having you uh, at that meeting and presenting. What are you presenting at the Northwest Society? And Northwest Society, actually, I just published a paper in ASJ this month. Uh, it's called Smile Masterpixy. And it's a very novel uh, idea that I came up with through uh, doing years of you know, breast reconstruction in, in, in aesthetic fashion to preserve the skin envelope of the breast. You know, the, one of the best uh, advances in breast reconstruction over the past decade has been preservation of the skin envelope. You know, skin envelope of the breast is just like any other special skin, like your eyelid, your nose. It's hard to recreate. So if we preserve it, we can take advantage of it. Well, in patients who are tardic, you know, traditionally a lot of times they take out the central part of the breast, nipple, areola, and I've came up with a technique called small mastopexy where I preserve the skin, I preserve the nipple areola complex on the uh, adipodermal flap, uh -huh. and then I use that in my, in my advantage to uh, augment the upper pole of the breast where a lot of these folks have a uh, rippling problem in pre uh, pectoral uh, reconstruction. So it's a, it's a great aesthetic way of dealing with the skin envelope when you have a lot of extra skin. And it got published in ASJ and I have some videos in it so I've already had a lot of folks reach out to me and ask me about this technique because it's a great, it would be a great tool for them. Fantastic. I look forward to hearing more about it and reading the article. So, anything else you'd like to share with us before you hit back up to the slopes? Yeah, the slopes in the sky. <laughs> oh, that's right. You're flying out. That's right. I'm no flying. skiing today. You'll get ready to fly to Maui. No, I am just uh, thankful for you doing this because this is the future of aesthetic medicine. Oh, you're very kind. And you just have to bring in the different minds from different walks of life in aesthetic medicine and uh, make it the best. I think that's the future. Great. More collaboration. Yes. With industry. Industry and, and uh, our colleagues of different specialties. That's right. That's a good point. That's another thing that's unique about this meeting is we have our derm colleagues here. We have facial plastics colleagues here. We have people that are aesthetic medical surgeons and medicine people. And, uh, and then we're open to other subspecialties. And as a matter of fact, Grand Masterminded whole uh, uh, technology, and we had a meeting here yesterday, and he actually brought the derm and plastic surgeons together in one room and uh, helped us collaborate more. That's right, and learn from one other. another. Absolutely. We all want the very best outcomes we for, have for our, patients. for our patients, and we can learn from one another, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's the patient's it's um, care, patient's safety. That's right. Yeah, it was great to see my, Dr. Michael Kaminer and to have the plastic surgeons and the derms in one room and then go to dinner. Uh, it's a great opportunity, I think, to learn from one another.
as is this beautiful meeting. So thank you very much for joining us today on the Technology of Beauty, where I get to interview the movers and shakers of the beauty business. And as you can see, today was no exception. Thank you, Grand, and go Ducks. <laughs> go Ducks. Well, with us again here at the Technology of Beauty at the American Brazilian Aesthetic Medicine uh, meeting here in Park City is the one and only Dr. D Barry D. Bernardo. Barry, welcome back. Thank you, Grant. Thank you so much for having me again. You're welcome. You're welcome. So tell us, tell us what's hot and what's not. What's what's the latest and greatest? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna just pick one thing. We've looked around the meeting here, and. I saw something in the body contouring category, and um, we, we've had a lot of body contouring devices, and, and those are the devices to non-surgically, no intervention, reduce your fat. And um, there's one here that uses an ultrasound energy, low frequency ultrasound, and the the big thing about low frequency is it doesn't hurt. A lot of those other devices are hot, they hurt, this doesn't. and um, this is a non-surgical treatment. You do it for 15 to 30 minutes, once a week for four times, and we're seeing visible results. Like we treated one of the attendees at the show yesterday, uh -huh. 15 minutes. I'm going to show her photos in my talk, and, and we saw visible results right away. Amazing. Now, could a person keep doing it more than four times? Well, it, it seemed, well, it depends how much fat you have. Right, I right, mean, okay. <laughs> It, Could an obese person continue doing it? Is it possible? So, is so, there a limit to how many times you can do it? I think the limit is that you got to your end point where you wanted to reduce your fat. For example, so uh, we were looking at this. If, if someone is medium to smaller, they might do four treatments. If they're okay. larger, they could do six or more. The uh, people at their booth showed us an image of someone who did nine treatments. Okay. But this was a big guy, and it was very significant loss. So I, I think um, this energy does one to two centimeters down. It that takes was my that, next question. How deep does it go? One to two centimeters. So if you keep repeating it, you're just stacking your loss and just going on and on. So... So it doesn't go intra-abdominal? Not that we know. I mean, it's one, one to two centimeters okay. down. If you're skinny and you have no fat, well, you have no business really doing this. Right. I got it. How much does the treatment cost? So I think what we're going to do is um, single treatments are $750, but everyone does a package. Okay. Uh, so the package is going to be uh, $2,400. Okay. Uh, and that would be to do two areas, like a whole, ab, you know, a, an area about the size of a sheet of paper. Okay. And, well, um, interesting. What's the name of it again? Oh, we didn't, I don't think we even said it. It's called Ultimate Contours, and that's the new device. And uh, we're going to start promoting that to our patients because, as you know, we always try to bring the, bring the latest and greatest technologies and the, tech the technology, technology of beauty. Of beauty. <laughs> very good. <laughs> there you have thank it. Well, thank you, you so much, much, my friend. You betcha. So thank you very much for joining us, and thank you, Dr. DiBernardo, for joining us here at the Technology of Beauty, where we get a chance to interview the movers and shakers of the beauty business. <laughs> and as you saw, today is no exception. And today with us is Dr. John Metters. You know, we have a chance now to meet new people here, and we get to meet the movers and shakers of the beauty business, and today is no exception. John, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you here. You told me about this great technology. I just heard about it. I want to hear more about it. First of all, where are you from, John? So I'm from uh, Alpine, Utah. Really? Yes. And what, you got, what got you into body contouring, John? So uh, I had a surgical center in California in 2003, and I was uh, renting out my space to uh, plastic surgeons and saw liposuction done for the first time. I thought there must be an easier way to remove fat from the body. And Good that was for you. So that's kind of in the back of my mind. And uh, 10 years later, I, I acted on it. It started in 2013. Now, you're a doctor. Are you an engineer? No. Okay. What kind of doctor are you? I'm a chiropractor. Okay. And you got in the fat business, body contouring. What, Correct. Which is what I'm in. Sure. And you, what did you invent? What did you develop? So basically, I uh, hired five different engineering companies to help me invent a device that would immediately take fat off the body. And four of the five failed, and I finally found a gentleman that was 80 years old that knew all about ultrasound, and took him two years to get the engineering 
down where we could get this very specific frequency in the way we're delivering the frequency to uh, affect the cell membrane of the fat cells. So you kill the fat immediately. You said the word immediately. Correct. So if I come in and I get in this wonder device you have, I'm going to get skinny right away? Correct. So we like to do a before photo, treat you for 40 minutes, do an after, and we can see an immediate change in your body. Well, a couple questions. Do I pee out the fat or what, what, where's the fat go? Well, basically, you're, we liquefy those fat cells and it's going to be processed through your lymph system and out your urine. Interesting. Okay. And does it hurt? So that's the very best part of it. Everybody asks about pain. We have zero pain involved with the treatment. No downtime, no pain. Now, wait a minute. I've used ultrasound to minimize fat with some of the technologies. I'm going to mention their name now. And I've had it done. And it hurts like the dickens. You're telling me you have ultrasound. I can lose fat on the moment you treat me, and it doesn't hurt? Correct. So basically, the old technologies, we're using heat, typically around 140 degrees, and we're not using heat at all. Our temperature on the skin is 92 degrees, so the sound waves we're using are causing this disruption in the fat cells. So we're not using heat, so we're not having any pain involved in the treatment. So why does the adipocyte die? So we're uh, vibrating those cells, and creating little air bubbles inside that cell, and that creates this pressure, and it just causes the um, so membrane. So you blow them up? Correct. So you're not melting them? No. You're creating bubbles in my adipocytes, and they, and they explode? Correct. Now, I want to make it perfectly clear to everybody, I have no investment in this company. I just heard about it here at ABAM. I wish I did own the company from what I'm hearing here from John today. I definitely want to have the treatment done. So do you have the machine here? We do. Um, one of the things that we love to do is demonstrations. You know, talk's cheap, and we want to show people uh, exactly what we can do for them. Uh, we have a lot of photos, and here's some photos here that we can show you. Basically, this is a before photo, 40 minutes later, where the person did not have any time to diet or exercise, and they can see a change immediately. This is uh, one week later, and then this is uh, two weeks later. So you can see a drastic change in her body. There's no way she could diet or exercise this abdomen off to this in two weeks without the treatment that we're doing. I would agree with that. So basically, That's remarkable. we go to conventions. We treat about 20 to 25 people at a convention, take their pictures. Today, we treated some people in their room. Um, we'll show some pictures of somebody that was very, very thin, and you can see a change immediately. Can I sign up for tomorrow or the next day or the we next day? We can do you right now when we're go. done. Right now? Right well, now. Well, I have to go to a special dinner. Here. Yeah, after, after dinner is not a good time for a treatment. No, tomorrow. Not at all. But I, I need about 10 or 12 of these treatments. So how Probably much six. A, <laughs> how much does a person lose? Do you quantify it by percentages or inches? Well, right now we're not sure. It just depends on the size of the person. So, you know, a smaller person is going to lose less. As you can see, sure. with the, the bigger ones, we get the drastic picture changes. How about intra-abdominal fat? You know, the beer bellies, the fat that's in our omentum, the stuff around our liver and our pancreas and our intestines. Can you get inside of my belly? We're not quite sure what's going on deep inside. So we're doing research, and we'll find that out over the next couple of months. Fascinating. Using uh, MRI technology and testing blood to see what's really going on. This is really exciting. I'm glad I met you, and I hope I can get on that list to be treated tomorrow. Um, are you going to be down in San Diego by any chance at the Aesthetic Society meeting? I April? will be. We'll be there treating patients. So we'll have two or three tables there going all day long. How would you like to speak at the Aesthetic Innovation Summit? I'd love to. Well, as the co-chairman myself and one of the founders of it, I'd love to have you up there on a panel. On I'll body be there. Contouring. You promise? Sure. Deal? Great. Okay. Go Ducks! Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Technology of Beauty, where I have the opportunity to interview the movers and shakers of the beauty business. And today is no exception, except we're in Park City today, and we're at the ABAM meeting, which is the American Brazilian Aesthetic Medicine meeting, thanks to Dr. Renato Saltz and all the co-chairs that are helping us. And they've allowed us to set up here for the Technology of Beauty, and we're welcoming Dr. Fouad Nahai, Dr. Nahai, it's great to see Good you. Thank morning. you for coming. Good and to be with you face second to time. face. And the last time I interviewed him, he was at this meeting, and we were sitting in the studio in Manhattan Beach, and we did it on Zoom. It's so wonderful to see you live, Dr. Nahai. Thanks for joining us. So how are you liking the meeting? 
Oh, I love the meeting. You, you always learn something new. You know, I've been practicing for over 43 years. I never sit back and say, I know it all. I'm never complacent. I'm never arrogant. I never say that, oh, this person just finished training. What do they have to teach me? Everyone has something to teach me, and that's why I love going to meetings. This one's intimate. Yes. It's small, it's intimate. People are not inhibited, they're not intimidated to get up, speak their mind, make comments, you know, I agree with you, or I did that years ago, it doesn't work, how mm -hmm. come you're resurrecting it again? So. Right. It's been a great intimate meeting and I always tell everyone when I go back home, I thought I went there to lecture and to teach, but I learned as much as I gave. Right. And we have our friends from all over the world here also. So even though it's a small meeting, it has an international flair to it with our friends from Istanbul. I just interviewed Nazim and our friends from South America and other parts of Europe. So uh, I agree with you. This is a fun meeting. And you and I have been going to this meeting for years and years since it started. Absolutely. For the same reasons. Yes, indeed. Indeed. So uh, you've seen a lot of technologies in the last few days and, and you're exposed as the editor to our beloved journal, the Aesthetic Surgery Journal. And so you're in the know. This is the technology of beauty. Can I ask you to look at your crystal ball and tell me what you see coming down the next three, five years? Oh, absolutely. I think the lectures we had on regenerative medicine, s stem cells, and now exosomes mm -hmm. at the next level, and being able to transcutaneously place exosomes under the skin for skin revitalization. We've seen advances in non-invasive tissue tightening, not just for the face, but also for genital aesthetic improvements. We're seeing more sophisticated and, dare I say, safer lasers. We're now seeing new technologies for cellulite, which frankly was something that was very, very difficult to deal with. So my crystal ball is facelifts won't go away because some people wait too long. But for the rest, there's so many things we can offer, not just as preventive, but early treatment that maybe some of my fellows in mid-career won't be doing as many facelifts as I did, but they'll be embracing these technologies. Uh -huh. I couldn't agree with you more. And the younger patients coming in and, uh, and they talk about prejuvenation or they're embracing fillers and neuromodulators and skin care, it seems at a much younger age, to your point. Absolutely. So they may postpone a facelift, mm -hmm. They may go through life without needing one because they've been proactive, pre-rejuvenating. Pre <laughs> uh-huh, absolutely. Okay, uh, anything else you'd like to share with us about ABAM or your lovely wife or uh, your practice, what's going on? Well, the joy of my practice is to be in practice with my son. Indeed. Who is a friend, who is an excellent plastic surgeon. Whenever he's complimented, I tell them, he takes after his mother, <laughs> who's been my companion, my best friend for 53 years, and uh, we have a fellowship, and I enjoy being involved in the training of the next generation of leaders and contributors to our great specialty. Indeed, and I want to thank you for all you've done for our specialty. Dr. Nahai is one of only two people in the world, in the universe, who's been the president of the International Society of Aesthetic Plastic Surgery, as well as the American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgery. And he's also the sitting editor of the Aesthetic Surgery Journal, and I could go on and on and on. But most importantly, he's my friend. He's all of our friends. So thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing well, you soon. Before we go, I have to thank you, not just for your friendship, but for this technology of beauty where you are putting us in touch with those who are 
working with us, working together to advance everything for the benefit and safety of our patients. This is a great format for interaction Thank between you. the practitioner and those who bring the technology to us. Well, thank you very much. We enjoy doing it, and we're on every Tuesday at about 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, and we're also on YouTube. All of our episodes are on YouTube at The Technology of Beauty. So thank you very much. We love doing it. You take care. I love you. I love you, too. And I have the opportunity to interview now Isaac Musley. Thanks for coming, Isaac. Oh, thanks he for having me. He is one of the co-CEOs of a company called Apex. Sometimes you see APX, and you yeah. can see his pin there. Yeah. And uh, I was able to grab him before he goes off to the slopes. <laughs> Thank you very much for oh, joining thanks. us. Thanks. Thanks for having me again yes. on your show. It's so Super great excited. to have yes. you back. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, well, how's the show going for you? Great. You saw the talks today. I yeah. think it went amazing. Uh, we got a lot of traction. People love it. Um, we are looking to partner with some industry. Yep. We already had those ongoing conversations. Um, it's exciting. It's so for those who haven't heard what Apex is, give us a little f a feel for what, what do you provide the, uh, the practices? What is Apex? Yeah, so it's really come to three different components, right? It's kind of like the training based on all the roles in the practice, starting from the doctors, how to do consultation, how to really run the, the, the practice from the financial side, analytical side, uh -huh. to the patient care coordinator, to the front desk, how to answer the phone, how to... Credential, the doctor, the practice, all of that stuff on training side. Okay. Then we have the analytical part of it, which actually very exciting. This week we released a new version for that. Um, those are calculators for financial and operational. Uh -huh. And we just added the first version of the business intelligence dashboard with the visualization back, back to kind of like what Atlas, where Atlas started, Atlas right. KPI. Um, and then we, in addition to that, the third wheel is kind of like the community. It's an ongoing education when practices come together once a week, moderated by us, by our consultants, and just discuss any challenge practice can go. So and they it, share? They the share. Practices share information? Correct. Yeah. That's the third part of this. I, would, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, that's a community. That's We release master classes. Sometimes you come with agenda. We bring in expert matters, how to reduce merchant processing fees. It was just last week. I ran it, actually. Uh -huh. um, and every time there is different subject. My employees don't want to get vaccination, or I need to raise prices, or I do open house. Anybody have advices and practices, just share. Okay. And we're creating that community so they don't have to wait for meetings to speak with each other and only with people that they know, but actually random people who never met before just share your advices between themselves. And okay. Yeah. Now, you mentioned industry. You mentioned you're talking to industry here. I yeah. imagine you're partnering up with some of these industries. Is that correct? I am. Yeah, we are. We're, it's, it's in the process. So we are, we're um, looking to narrow things down in the next couple of so days. So at this point, does a physician pay a, a subscription to have this service? Is it, is it a monthly subscription? Is it a one-time fee? How does that work? It's a yearly subscription. Yearly so subscription. they do a yearly subscription. We have really two plans. One of them is a $5,000 a year, which is Nothing. It's come mm -hmm. out to like 400 and something dollars, right? Which yep. you think like it's almost like I have a consultant online 24-7 to your practice, to the entire thing with analytics. Um, and that's kind of like a do-it-yourself, right? They get access. They can do everything they need in the practice. They can join the community calls. They have support. And then we also have the $10,000 a year, which is more hand-holding coaching. So with that, they also getting our consultants. They connect with them on a quarterly basis. They mm -hmm. can buy additional hours. And that's kind of like more hand-holding. So if okay. you compare it to a gym, if you know what you do and you just need more help, go to the gym, do what you do. If you need the trainer to be there to help you to build a plan for you can work out, then it's the better plan. Okay. Um, and industry, uh, if, they, if you have a partnership with industry, will they help with that fee? Or how, what's that looking like? Yeah, or so that's, that? that's kind of like what we're starting to work on. It's, nothing is signed yet, so okay. it's maybe a little too early to... to discuss it, but, uh, but the concept will be really to roll Apex with, uh, kind of like sponsor the first year of Apex as part of their services, so we can almost give them the support. Um, a lot of the, I'll say, challenge that those industry providers have or other services uh -huh. is the adoption, and that goes down to the training, right? Absolutely. How is the front desk is going to speak about it, how the provider is going to know to speak about it, what if the turnaround, right, of the practice, people go, people come, how everybody stay on top? How do you merge it with your other services in the practice? Mm -hmm. So that's really our cup of tea. So that's really where we can help. And it's almost first line of support, right? Where do I start? This is where you start. Yeah. Um, and it can save them a lot of money, obviously, sending agents to the, every practice to sit yeah. with the team and train them in person. 
Um, Isaac, this is long overdue. It's a fantastic service. I, I couldn't help but notice you talking to the people at Ravel yes. with their new uh, their new Sailite device, the yeah. uh, Avali. And I saw you speaking with Christina, and then I yes. saw you speaking with the CEO. Yeah. Uh, I hope that this uh, that you have a wonderful partnership with I, Ravel and help the those of us who are using the Avali yes. uh, to release the cellulite and improve the contour of women's bo- buttocks and thighs and so forth. And they have amazing product, right? Revolutionary yes. to some degree. And we love to obviously... And you have a revolutionary correct, product. So correct. it's a beautiful, so it's beautiful marriage. Beautiful marriage. And their solution goes with a lot of other services in the practice. So combining that into treatment plans, right. it's just like almost natural. Great. Yeah. I also saw you meeting with Engage. Engage oh, technology. Yes, I couldn't yeah. help but see you. Yeah, no, that's it's wonderful. A, that's another great partnership. It's another I great partnership. You to pursue. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you very much no. for being on the program. Thank you. Thank you so us. much. Yes. Looking okay. forward for the next time. Great. I love it. See you soon. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hello, and welcome back to the Technology of Beauty, where I have the opportunity to interview the movers and the shakers of the beauty business, and today is no exception, except that we're at ABAM. We're in Park City, Utah at the American Brazilian Aesthetic Medicine Conference. And with us today is Dr. Nazan Circus. N- Nazan, it's great to have you. Yeah. Nice Nazan to meet you. Nazan came all the way over for this meeting from Istanbul, Turkey. Did you hear that? Istanbul, Turkey. Welcome. So great to see you. <laughs> Full disclosure, though, he's my brother from another mother. <laughs> I sometimes call him my Turkish mafia <laughs> friend. Yeah. I've had the good fortune of being in his home in his home city. I've traveled to Istanbul, and I'm happy to tell you he is actually the president of the International Society of Aesthetic Plastic Surgery. So great to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, Grant, and always pleasure to meet you, my brother. Yes, I know, and it's so great. His daughter goes to USC, where I'm a professor, Yeah, and, uh, and on and on. But Enough of that. So, are you originally from Turkey? Yes, I am from Turkey. I was born in Istanbul. Really? Uh, Yeah. So, you lived there your whole life? Well, you know, I grew up in Ankara, in capital, but, you know, since 1985, I'm practicing in Istanbul. Yes. I trained in Istanbul University Medical Faculty. Okay. Yeah. And you're now the president of the International Society, is that correct? Yes. President of International Society of Aesthetic Plastic Surgery, which is the largest international society in aesthetic plastic surgery in the world. In the world. And we have more than 5,000 members from 113 countries right now. That's amazing. Yeah. And what's the name of your journal? Uh, Aesthetic Plastic Surgery. Yes. It's uh, one of the most prominent aesthetic plastic surgery journal. you know, in our field. Yes, in the world. In the world. That's and, right. uh, and we are proud of that. And the, the goal of the society, as I know, is education and yes. patient safety. Yeah. Yeah. And you give many, many, many seminars to doctors all around the world. I remember when I was on the board and you were the director of education. I yeah. think it was, and you went to, it was over 20 in a year. Was it 23? Well, you know, I oh. was a education council chair between... 2010 to 2014, we organized 46 international congresses uh, on those uh, years. In those years, 46. And, uh, all over the world, in yes. different continents, in different cities, you know, even small countries, we organized. Our mission is to educate the young generation, plastic surgeons, and patient safety. Yes. yes. And we all are volunteer. We don't get any you know uh, salary at all from from the society all this uh, is the voluntary work and you were in the board of yes. ICEPs you know many years we worked together yes it's a l- wonderful society a family absolutely no question about it and so it's uh, all the physicians are volunteers and as you mentioned it's uh, dedicated to patient safety through education yeah and now as the president you're going to be hosting a big meeting tell us about it yeah our when is it our next world congress that will be end of my presidency uh, will be in istanbul on 20 to 24 september this year 2022 okay and it will be in the heart of city in the best location and we are hoping the the biggest attendance ever we have prepared a 
a very, very uh, intensive scientific program, including uh, surgical and non-surgical. We are, mm -hmm. we are gonna have the very uh, big non-surgical portion of in the in the Congress. Mm -hmm. So, including the you know all industry the lasers, uh, fillers, you know the all applications, stress, etc., mm -hmm. and uh, also the business school. Right. Yeah, we're gonna have the life applications of the minimal invasive uh, you know surgery uh, we will broadcast the live applications to the meeting call okay. also we gonna have the live uh, surgeries you know the surgery operations as well as the cadaver dissections will be broadcasted to the to the meeting call okay so we are, we are planning uh, you know a lot of stuff and Together this will be with four days, five days? That will be five days. Five days? Yes. But the, f the first day will be particularly live surgeries, you know, live facelifts, live, you know, uh, surgical operations, and the sculpture course, and the other symposium. The panels is going to start from 21st, uh, which, which will be uh, Wednesday, okay. till the end, uh, till the Till Sunday, okay. And uh, Sunday uh, is free, but uh, we're gonna have a great social program. That is the more more important. Yes. Yeah, you know. And if you haven't been be. to Istanbul, well, yeah. it's a great city. Yeah. One of the most influential cities in the world, in the yeah. history of the yeah. world. Yeah. yeah. Three Istanbul. empires were yeah. in Istanbul. Yeah. And you guys definitely know how to party. Yeah. And we're gonna have, have a, a great time. Fun. Yeah, yes. We're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna have a great gala dinner on the Bosphorus along to see, uh -huh. and the Istanbul night. We will entertain on Saturday night yeah. uh, the, when the finish end till morning. We're gonna dance and uh, we're gonna I have fun. I can remember doing that with you one time on yeah. the Bosphorus. Yeah. I can remember. Uh, partying all night long and ending yeah. up and watching the sunrise yeah, yeah. on the other side of the Bosphorus, on the yeah, Asian yeah, side. Yeah. And I couldn't yeah, believe it. I, yeah. I see the sunrise over water on yeah, the east because yeah, I'm a West Coast guy, yeah. right? It was quite remarkable. Okay, now, so you're going to have live surgery, cadaver dissections, uh, procedures, live non-surgical procedures, many, many uh, lectures and so forth, and a business track. Hot, hot topics, hot topics. And a hair transplantation course we're going to have. We're going to have sculpture course, you know, uh -huh. for the yes. nose and face sculpture. And uh, the business school and, you know, so Sounds many, many other things. And we are expecting over 3,000 3, people. people. Also, derms are welcomed to our meetings, to the non-invasive part. Okay, terrific. So, so, dermatologists and other aesthetic surgeons and aesthetic practitioners are welcome at this meeting. And not only that, all of industry is welcome. I yeah. know, Nazem, yeah. one of your missions also has been very inclusive of yeah. all of industries, yeah. correct? They are welcome. You know, we particularly look forward to... Uh, having them in Istanbul and uh, that will be great and uh, it will be a truly international meeting you know I am expecting like to 500 plastic surgeons from Turkey but expecting uh, like 2500 even more from uh, all over the world. the world whoever I talk so far they want to come to Istanbul. I hope the COVID situation uh, will be fine. Yes. As today, if it will be as today, I am expecting over 3,000 uh, uh, delegates to the meeting. And we already have over 400 signed up faculty. We have a great faculty, uh, including the plastic surgeons, as well as other course. Fantastic. The derms and the other specialties. And uh, it, it's going to be a great uh, opportunity to learn the latest developments in aesthetic plastic surgery. And for the industry, it's yeah. a great opportunity to present there. Yes. And uh, we're going to have a big, you know, the exhibition hall, uh -huh. very large exhibition hall. And the, also, they will be able to present during the sessions okay you know of course they're gonna pay for that and but th will they present in the exhibit hall oh uh, uh, in the exhibit hall or in sessions okay yeah Good. they can they can have workshops and they they can introduce the, their products Excellent. and uh, actually we want to learn the new technology sure. technology is growing up every day and you know 
Teknoloji the technology of beauty. Yeah, it is hard Sounds to like change. Sounds a good name for a program. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, every meeting I see a new thing. And yes. I want to know that. Absolutely. And I want, but, you know, I don't have time to. But it, it will be a great opportunity for me, for us as plastic surgeons or the delegates. And uh, to what is this technology? Also for them to uh, promote their their product, products. Yes. Products. Well, we all look forward to it. I can't wait to see you in Istanbul in September, twentieth yeah, yeah. to twenty fourth. Yeah, twenty to twenty fourth, twenty twenty two. Right in so Istanbul. Yeah, uh, it will be ISAP's World Congress. The website is www. ISEPS Istanbul 2022.com. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for joining yeah. us. I look forward to seeing you in April in San Diego. Yeah, I will be in San Diego. I, yeah. know you will. I always come. Yes, you, you know. always come. Yeah. And uh, so the next time after this meeting, I'll see you in April in San Diego at our annual meeting. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Pleasure you to talk to you now again. Now go skiing. Yeah, I'm going to go skiing. Yeah, I hope so. Okay, you take care. Thank Bye -bye. you so much. You're welcome. Grant, for this opportunity. You're welcome, Bye -bye. Nazim. I just had the opportunity to meet Ethan Min. And his booth is right next to us, and thankfully they've allowed us to set up here. Ethan, welcome to the Technology of Beauty. Thank you for having me. Thank it's you. a pleasure. And I'm going to have him back on the show, but I, I'd like us all to get to know him a little bit more and also understand a little bit more about this whole concept of exosomes. We don't, I don't understand exosomes that well. And there's a number of companies that are bringing this to market. And uh, down in Octane, Newport Beach, just recently, the winner of one of the big awards was a company that's involved in exosomes. And, and I've been told this is the future, regenerative medicine and exosomes. So thank you very much for coming here today. Uh, first of all, well, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm Where glad to be part of. Great. Where are you from? Well, we're based in Orange County, California. Fantastic. Yeah. That's right up the road from me. Yes, but I'm personally from Korea. I was born and raised. I moved out to the United States when I was 25. Okay. Did you come out for school? I came here for school, yes. I went to college in Chicago, and then again, I settled in Ridge County after the school. Well, that's where I'm from. Yep. Thank you. Terrific. Be, uh, um, well, that's wonderful. From our town. Absolutely. Okay, so tell us about your company. What's it called? It's called Benev. Uh, it's the short... Uh, Words of beneficial evolutionary or word benevolent. Okay. Uh, and then um, be next venture. That's the words that kind of goes back of how the actual brand manager came up with the name Benev. But it actually uh, talks about the characteristics and the vision of the founder, which his name is Mr. Min. He's my uncle. Okay. So I am the uh, nephew of Mr. Min who found the company in 2000. In the United States. Fantastic. And what do you produce? So what is your product? So we are a FDA licensed manufacturing facility basically based out of Orange County. So our main manufacturing product is skincare and topical drugs. Okay. Uh, that was from the very beginning. Uh, since 2014, I became a president of the company. I changed around the company's vision and how we want to move forward with our company in the aesthetic field into a company who can introduce a innovative technology from Asia to U.S. market and innovative product in U.S. market to Asia. Because that's where both I feel... Both directions. Yes, both directions. Okay. Because I feel confident that I have enough of network. Being in the industry for 17 years uh, in both end, working closely with some of the U.S. network, with American doctors, plastic and derms, and again, uh, a lot of uh, cosmetic surgeons, as well as the uh, doctors... Uh, that are in aesthetic field in Asia. And also the company, uh, I'm also represent, I'm not a doctor. Uh, I major finance. Uh, so I'm far from scientists or medical doctors, but uh, I have a lot of network of people that I know of uh, that are not a doctor, but in the industry. Okay. Basically for the purpose of generating profit. And also, um, uh, I I've, I've personally felt like I wasn't fitting in and I wasn't ready for this type of stuff. But again, I found this industry fascinating, uh -huh. very innovative, fast changing. And obviously we talk about beauty, right? And yes. aesthetics. The technology of beauty. Yes. That's what we're here talking about. And then again, obviously you got to talk about health, beauty, and also longevity and sex and all part of this whole beauty segment. 
and which I felt this is pretty fascinating. And, and again, uh, I love working with women, obviously, and they're full of women that are in the industry that I felt that I can fit really well and then they can also shoot really well. So that's probably the reason why I'm still here where I am and then again, continuing what I'm doing. Okay, so your company provides exosomes, correct? Yes. Well, why don't you tell us briefly what exosomes are, but only you have less than five minutes because I want to go further into this. Yeah. So uh, you really have to bring growth factors before you talk about exosomes. And then again, what's inside of exosome is separate subjects, but our base, obviously, and my, my technology start with the growth factor technology. Yes. Benev has been a manufacturer of growth factors since 2008. We were researching about growth factors since 2004. So about the time that Skin Medica and all the other company came up with the growth factor products, uh -huh. their focus was to come up with a physician dispensed skincare line. Yes. That doctor would sell off the shelf. And to that was patient. TNS. TNS recovery. Uh, our focus was a little different. Our focus was really more for providing a providers, which is the doctors, a solution maybe they can utilize at their practice. Because we were making a postcare kit and a postcare for a lot of resurfacing devices, a lot of laser devices, that they will let the patient walk out of the door without putting proper postcares. That's going back in 2005. We thought if we understand the therapeutic potential of growth factors, if you make sure that physicians understand that postcare starts when they complete their procedures, if you can convince them that there's a skincare product you can use to make sure the patient walk out with a proper right postcare starts immediately after the procedures. Okay, a number of companies have done that. Yes, this so, is not. I asked you about yeah. exosomes. Yeah, so. So, so that's uh, many the, companies have done postcare. Okay, that's yeah. as old. So as the growth factor was the ingredient that I chose to do so, kay. but we did not come up with a product that sell to the patient. We're the first one came up with a product that physician uses at the clinic that we would not sell it to the patient, because as you said, a lot of company came up with the products that they are selling to their patient so that they can maintain at home. Okay. Right? So that was the first focus. So what it is, it's like, this is a skincare solution. They use as if this is a drug. It's not a drug, but explained by physicians and importance of post-care. And obviously, growth factor has a lot of story. Right Now, moving to the exosome. The growth factor is usually produced by the cell. Right? If you go through a certain culture process, right? cell usually releases it as you proliferate. Right? They would filter out the cell, right? They will extract the growth factors from the culture process. And that's a TNS recovery. What they did is basically they put the conditioned media, which is the remainder of the medium after you filter out the cell. They'll put that into the cosmetic product, put it in the cosmetic bottle, make a formula and sell it to the patient, right? So exosome is in essence very similar. Exosomes are being produced during the cellular proliferation process. That your cell, I don't care whether it's a stem cell or fibroblast cell or epithelial cell, as you proliferate, right, it releases certain factors. And again, growth factor is definitely one of them. Axosome happen to be treated as a waste basket. Basically, the cells are releasing. What they found out in 2009 is that it actually contains, right, exosome itself, we thought it was actually the waste basket, contains the growth factors as well as cytokines. It's a whole different package of components that cell releases that are captured in the bilipid membranes being released from. What it does, exosome are basically a messenger to cell to cell communication. Growth vector is also a messenger. Growth vector is more of a texting type of messengers, but exosome is more of a visual, virtual, let's say Zoom messengers. It brings so much more information at once, it really helps cell to basically communicate better. Okay. So, okay. So, I don't mean to cut you off. No, it's okay. There are a number of companies with exosomes. Yes. What makes your exosome technology different or better than the next one? I don't think we are better, to be honest with you. And then I do believe there's industry uh, 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 that we have, we're playing along right now that actually have really good companies. They have a good technology. I would think we're different because the approach we chose to launch the product. I wanted to focus on the commercialization of exosome five years ago. 
rather than claiming a therapeutic potential of exosome. Because I've gone through the same FDA hurdles with growth factors 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I knew, and again, we've got written 43 many times. We've gotten visited by FDA inspectors that you can't say this, you can't say this. And we got many, many, many complaints coming from FDA. You can't say these stuff. You can't sell that product, right? That's where we started with the exosome. When I first looking into the exosome, because we knew as we have a process to culture the cell, we found out that there's an exosome that we can basically produce out of our process that I have to do this differently. And then again, we have a lot of issues dealing with the conditioned media we talked about. Is the conditioned media what we thought to be a purified exosome? It's not really a purified exosome because there's a lot of stuff in the conditioned media if you were to culture the cell. Do you have a technology to completely filter out and then get the purified exosome? Answer is no. We don't have a 100% purification process. No one has it. Are right? your exosomes the same as my exosomes? Different. So you have your own unique ex exosomes, exosomes, correct? Yes. Some companies talked about exosomes from plants. Yes. Non-biological. And I've also read about exosomes from other animals yeah. besides primates. Yes. And um, this is, gets really interesting. And again, I know five minutes is not going to be enough. So in the process, right, I, I was looking at the commercialization. I decided to partner, as I said, with some other Korean company who were ahead of us in funding to set up a better facility for the pilot batch size, right? And also in technology who've gone in and actually patent the process of filtering the exosome. And three, who have technology who could also have gone through the trial error to dry freeze them in an easy word, a lyophilization process, mm -hmm. which is very common in the pharmaceutical field. Sure. Right? Some people cast question about like, well, exosome can have the viability if you lyophilize it. But as you know, a lot of biologics, a lot of, you know, um, uh, product that are out there, right, they are lyophilized. You know, Botox, for instance, right? It is, mm -hmm. sure, you know. And then again, the unit measure is determined by the industry that FDA accepted it. So is that 100 units of toxin right. in the vial? And that's how we deal with the neuromodulators. Yes. So let's go back to exosomes. Yeah. So exosomes the same way. So we were able to partner with the company, although we have a lab, we're tissue bank, we're FDA licensed manufacturer for the skincare. Someone better than us, right? That I would like to partner with them to bring into the product that I feel confident commercializing so that I don't have to have any legal issue based on it. I don't have any cost issues that I can make the products. So you're not marketing this as a drug? No. It's a cosmetic? It's a cosmetic. That's a really good question because... But your exosomes can be used on my skin, even though your and I do not have the same exosomes. Yes. I understand because you're Because it's not a cell. It's acellular. So right. exosome is not a cell. Exosome is... But you're harvesting protein. it from fat cells, correct? Yes. From yeah. young women. Fat cells from young Caucasian yeah, so women. Yes, so age, not Caucasian women. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we have a process in our cell bank to basically process different kinds of uh, 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 cell, mm -hmm. but... For this particular uh, t uh, uh, stem cell, um, master cell bank, we call it, okay. is actually from Asian. Okay. Right? So there's and then you extract the exosome from that? So you would culture the stem cell, in this case, mesenchymal stem cells. Yes. Right? From the adipocytes, correct? Yeah, adipocytes. Okay. And it's a Korea also has a process in place for government to regulate them. Okay. Here in the U.S., you will do it, they will tell you, no, that's wrong. Right in Korea, right is not a lot of fair. They have to go abide by the government regulation on how to handle the stem cell, right? Okay. And then even culturing process. Right? So that's a difference. So we actually decide to go with the cell that are being under, well, actually gone through it under the regula regulatory review, making sure that these cells are free from all this disease and gone through the testing process. Uh. In U.S., most of tissue banks are supposed to do that as well, and they yeah. do it. So I believe they do it. But I felt that it's, there's more trustability when the government regulates certain process. So once this happens in Korea, then do you import it? Yes. So the way we do it is they go through the whole process of culture process, and then again, filter. We call use a TFF versus the ultra certification, and many companies use a different method. But we use the method that would... Uh, purify to the extent right, that we could 
take out all the quote unquote unhelpful stuff out of the way. Then we actually lifeize it. So all the processes are done. So you're in doing Korea. that in the states. No, you're pure, all no, the processes in Korea. It's a company called Exocobio. Okay. Um, they are fourth largest funded company in 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 topic of exosome. So they already had this process in place. They just didn't know what to do with it. So they're going for the whole drug process with admit. Right? They were doing toxicology studies, absorptions, metabolisms, uh, uh, and then again distribution in in the body. But then. They didn't know about the whole aesthetic aspect with the skincare. What I did is that I limit the potential, therapeutic potential of exosome, and then make it into a product that I can commercialize legally. So we. Well, this is fantastic, yeah. and we could talk. I know for hours, yeah. and I'd love to have you up in the studio, uh, <laughs> since you're local. You're in Orange yeah. County, and my studio yeah. is in uh, Manhattan Beach. I'd love to have you on for a full technology of beauty show. Yeah. This is very exciting. And we all are going to be a part of this exosome journey. I yes. can tell. This is smoking hot. Yeah. This is breaking yeah. news here in the not only in aesthetics but in all yeah, of medicine. I, I, I do believe so because obviously, like I said, this is going to be probably next ten years. People's going to talk about it. But Absolutely. I can guarantee you now. Guarantee you now that there's not going to be a single company that will get full FDA approval as a drug or as a medical device. Period. Okay. So then, what's the way for doctors or anybody to utilize this product? Uh huh. Is skincare. Yeah. I told this to my competitions people. I told them, I show them the way how it's done. Very simple. You gotta get your ingredient, register to the PCPC, get your inky name, common sense. But people still don't do it. I've told some of them actually start doing it, and then you have ingredient list on your box. So that doctors or consumer knows exactly what's on it. No hit and miss, right? That's mm -hmm. the skincare. You can't just say topical. Topical what? Is it topical drug or topical membrane for the medical device, or is it topical cosmetic, right? But if you're going to be a cosmetic, you better have. I know the cosmetic is the easy way to get easy, easiest way. You better have a proper label at, meaning yes. proper claim on it. Right. And that's what's missing out in the industry right now. And then again, I'm, I was the first one who started. And then again, we have launched our product three years ago. Mm -hmm. We have list our products called human adipocyte stromal cell exosomes. That's the name of our ingredients that yes. are listed, right? So anybody's welcome to use it if they're willing to pay me a royalty, because obviously we patent that as well too. Of course. You so, did. but it's a public information, and then again, they can use it. If Fantastic. they can prove that they can actually do it a different way, they should do the route. And then again, I know the company come out with a condition media as an ingredient name, which is a good thing. But this condition media is not exosome. Is exosome in the condition media? Yes. But the question is, what are the concentration, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're getting lyophilized these tiny bits from one liter of condition media. We go through the same process, right? We're saying we're getting one box of exosome. But they're putting it into right into let's say 100. So it's much more dilute. Okay, right? well this could go on forever. Yeah. Thank you very much thank for very being much. on the show yes. and for joining us here in Park City yeah. at ABAM. And thank you also to Renato Salz, Dr. Salz, for allowing us to do this interesting interview. And I look forward to having you up in Manhattan yeah. Beach. Thank you so much.